Um, so yeah, thanks for coming tonight. Um, supporting the Phoenix Library and the Historical Society of Phoenixville. Um, my presentation tonight um, is going to consist of all photography, and uh, most of the photographs are going to be uh, exactly what the title of the talk is then and now. So a lot of early uh, photographs, most of them dating from um, yeah, there's a lot from the 40s and 50s. There's a lot of them are based off of a uh, collection of data that we could purchase at the Historical Society. Um, and then there's going to be a mix of some earlier images, such as the one that you see right on the front screen here. Um, so there's going to be a nice mix of photographs. And um, you know, please feel free to chime in if you see something you recognize. Um, there's going to be definitely some things in here that uh, I'm sure people in the room that are going to remember. Um, and uh, if you see anybody in the photographs, feel free to say who they are, because we obviously would like to identify who a lot of the photographs are. Um, and uh, so we're going to get started. Um, the first photograph that we have up on the screen here is a photograph um, that dates from the early 1900s um, of what was formerly on the corner of Bridge and Main Street. Um, this photograph is one of the earlier photographs that, that I've seen of this building. We have other great photographs of this building. Um, this one's one of the, a little earlier one where the actual building was slightly different than what it changed to right after this photograph. Um, in this photograph, it still, it still has the overhang or the sidewalk, um, and it overhangs, the little overhangs down here. Up here in this photograph, you can clearly see this big giant window up here. That window was built. Um, when the building was built uh, to be a photographer's studio. Um, so that big window is a natural light um, that was used, you know, we're talking in the 1860s um, and uh, a little bit later, so they were using wet plate photography to develop their images and needed natural light to uh, get the image correct. So that's what that big giant window is. Now here's another photograph taken somewhere around 1910 era that uh, same building now it's missing its awnings um, still has a big window and on the front now there's a big sign that actually says Sigmund Photography. Um, Sigmund was a, a well-known photographer in Phoenixville for a long time and took many many photographs of Phoenixville people and places um, and ironically this is a photograph of David by Sigmund himself. Um, so it's a great uh, photograph and a lot of on these images, um, you know, you can see how there was always some sort of storefront in, in the front of the store here. Um, J.H. Stauffer's uh, stationery, they said cigars and ice cream and all kinds of other stuff. Um, way back here, you can see part of one of the Iron Company buildings that's long on. Um, and then here, believe it or not, is a weird addition that was once on the front of 10th North Main Street, the oldest house in Hainesville. Um, that house was, for a very long time, even dating back into early photographs like this, wasn't in the best shape. Um, and it has nothing to do with uh, the fact, you know, like say in the 70s and 80s when a lot of the buildings and stuff were, were getting pretty rough, um, especially the early photographs. Um, this was obviously an early photo, and even then the building wasn't great. So it's actually kind of a miracle the house is actually still standing. Uh, today, and it hadn't been knocked down. They, they tried a couple times, but um, it uh, still survives today, thank God. And uh, of course, is the oldest standing house in Phoenixville. Right, have any idea why it was called the Novell building? Um, I believe that there was a business in there that had, whoever really built the building. That's no, that wasn't on the first picture. No, so yeah, sure. it, they added it all later on, and there was other, I think it was one of the things that whoever owned the building, I believe that, that was his last name, there was multiple businesses in there. You can see from the sign here, the dentist sign, um, there was a business back here. So it was kind of like a um, co-op. <laughs> uh, so a little bit later photograph, not too far off, but I like this shot because it's a real candid uh, shot. It's actually from a snapshot um, that uh, we received at the Historical Society that I had large. Um, they can see the same building, but here now is the business of George Freeze. So Dave Freeze, his grandfather, um, had his shoe store in there for a period of time before he moved up on Main Street. 
um, a little bit later on. Here's a little tidbit of the front of 10 more from the weird addition that was on the front of it. Here's the Phoenix Iron Company pattern building that was Civil War period um, that was torn down. And um, this kind of dark over here, this image is uh, not well uh, exposed over here. This is my McGuire's building. This is now moved down Superior Beverage building. Um, we're going to get to, uh, I zoomed in on this photo a little bit later uh, to talk about some other things that are in this photograph that match up to something else. Now here's a little bit later image uh, from the 1960s of the same corner. Um, this photograph, you can see it was raining when I took this photograph, but it has a nice deep exposure. Here's a sign here for, uh, there's White's uh, Hardware Store, Dell's Pizza, Weber's Shoes, and McFadden's. Um, and uh, I, I, you see that now the, the building's changing a little bit more with some interesting uh, front facing going on in the building. Um, and uh, very art uh, deco front that was added on in the 40s. And uh, in the back here, you can still kind of see the front of the house. Um, and here it is today. So, but, oh, so there was a fire in the building, um, and uh, there's uh, caused quite a bit of damage. That the building was completely taken out, um, and this that giant building was once in that little lot, which is pretty amazing to think about. Um, now you can actually see Ten North Main Street, the front of the house. Um, this one is one of my favorites uh, because it's a pretty obscure one. Um, this was located on the 100 block of High Street. Um, this is all the way down the end here, close to Dayton Street. And as you can see um, from the front, a little red and beer, so the bar. Um, but on the top here, the, the, the uh, newspaper article labeled as the uh, Antietam House. This is from 1949. Um, the Antietam House is exactly what it sounds like. Um, it, was, it was named after the Battle of Antietam. Um, there was a Civil War veteran who was uh, from the north side of Phoenixville, named Patrick Phillips. Um, Patrick winds up fighting in, in multiple major battles during the Civil War. He gets wounded at the Battle of Antietam. Um, he stays in the fifth unit for a little bit longer and, and then winds up getting medically discharged in 1864. Um, he comes back to Phoenixville, and one of the first things he did was open this bar um, in 1864, and he named it the Antietam House. Um, it changed hands. Uh, after uh, Patrick died, he, he didn't live that much longer after that. By uh, 1867, he died. His wife took it over and ran it into the early 1900s. Um, and then after that, he changed hands multiple times between um, Polish and Italian uh, immigrants. Um, the, at one point, the uh, Del Quillo family owned this, just like many, many other businesses and restaurants in Phoenixville throughout the years. Um, and uh, on the original deed from the uh, building, believe it or not, actually still has the Antietam House on the original deed. And still had the, the original liquor license attached to the property. Um, when it's still being run as a bar in the 1970s. Is it still standing? Is that the Jolly House? That's it now. Yeah. So this is this is this is the exact building. It's really hard to tell. That, that, that's what that was. I mean, it's very hard to tell. That front facade is almost gone, and they kind of connected these buildings. It almost makes it look like these were, this is one house at one point. But as you can see from the photo, it wasn't. Um, both these buildings were mostly built pre-Civil War on that section on High Street. Now the building dates from about 1850. So everybody knows the gateway, right? Um, this photograph was taken in 1966, and uh, this uh, shot shows the original front facing of gateway towards Nut Road. And um, as you can see, the gas station over here that was still still there at the time. That whole corner was was ended. There was a gas station there in the early into the 19 teens, all the way into the 60s. And um, this is a great photo. Um, this photograph is the exact photograph that they used to paint the mural that's on the back of Gateway right now. Of course, that's what Gateway looks like now, um, if it was facing that road. 
And this is a, uh, a, a pretty cool view that you don't see too much. This is actually all the way up on the other corner, facing Gateway from the other side. Um, you can win, uh, stop and win two, three, 1955 Chevys um, at the Sunoco Oil. And if you zoom in on the photograph, uh, in the back here, but um, that's Gateway back here. And you can see over here the houses that were still there. The hospital. And so that hospital was up here. There was other houses all along there where 7 Eleven was, all that stuff. There was. And I was okay. Um, this one is one of the uh, mysteries of Phoenix Hill. I would say you can do escadas once in a while. So, there once was a World War II memorial monument uh, that was erected in uh, 1945. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what the location is. Anybody know where it was? Yes. Not okay. the So, the, as you can see, it's a pretty significant monument. Okay? All these names on here were all the names of soldiers um, that, were, uh, that died during the service. Um, they wound up being 70 from Phoenixville that were on that monument. Um, so, as you see, it was a very personalized monument uh, and a very nice one. Um, and uh, paid for by the citizens of Phoenixville. And that's what it looks like now. So, the post office at some point took it down. Um, no one knows exactly where it went. Um, like, it wasn't just part of the scrap, or what the heck happened to it. Um, but that stood right there, and when they put the parking lot in, um, not before, before that, and they, and in the back side, we're looking at another building, when they put parking lot in the back, other houses were torn down. Wow. Um, who owned this, the people who came to own the statue of Brad? Well, I haven't been able to find out who actually owned, 100% who actually owned the property that it was on. So, you would think there would be some sort of record of it. Um, it gets into a weird area. It's almost like the Civil War Monument in Mars Cemetery. Um, that Civil War Monument was paid for by, by donations of the citizens of Phoenixville to the Grand Army of the Republic. Um, now, of course, at that time, the cemetery was owned, you know, the Mars Cemetery was publicly owned. And then as time went on, it was sold off. Now, of course, it's owned by the cemetery company that exists in Pottstown. Um, and uh, they can't even give a straight answer on, you know, well, who's responsible for it. Well, it's your property, isn't it? And they're like, well, if somebody wants to fix it, you know, go ahead, do it yourself. That's pretty much the answer I got. So, um, and the telephone company at one time owned the building next door, correct? Yes. Right by parking lot. Yeah, yeah you can actually see it in the edge of it over here on the left. Same so, right in front of the top. Okay. Um, another. Uh, great image that came out of the negative collection that we acquired. Um, this is the Church Street School. This is the first, or the second fire company building um, that was built separately um, in 1900 when it moved up from Main Street up to Church Street. And um, the uh, fire company then wound up purchasing the Church Street School uh, and this is where it originally looked like. Church Street School was built in 1860. Um, it was a public school uh, for the citizens of Phoenixville. Very uh, cool architecture. Um, but uh, it was the school was closed. Eventually, the fire company said, "Go into the property," and that's what it looks like now. Um, they took off different layers of the uh, top, changed a little bit of the front, but as you can see, there's the stone uh, facing from the uh, Church Street School. And then over here, of course, they took off the top here as well for the 1900 fire company. Okay, so uh, this is a photograph taken on North Main Street. Uh, Mullen and Guires is right here. And uh, this is root down uh, for Superior Heaven before that. Um, this is definitely one of the earlier images that we have of this building specifically, where you can see very clearly see the original architecture of this building. The building is very, it fools you. Um, the building was actually built in 1870. Um, and it was actually, the borough of Phoenixville purchased the property from the iron company to build its first uh, borough hall slash 
marketplace slash like community center kind of thing. Um, and the it was used heavily as a marketplace for a very long time. Um, and there was always some sort of storefront um, down on this end here. And at one point in the 19 teens, there was a theater that was in there called the Saddleway Theater that had vaudeville um, and it was open, of course, and running at the same time the Colonial was existing right up the street. Um, and uh, the Saddleway Theater was not around that long. Uh, so there was, unfortunately, this is the only photo I've ever seen of it. Um, and it's not the best photo, but you know, it kind of does the job. Um, but as you can see, this is the original facade. They added on when the Mirabili family bought the building in the 1940s. Um, this is what it looks like now, kind of from that little bit close, close to that same angle. And um, this photo was taken in the 1960s of when it was Superior Beverage. And this is when they added, in 19, late 1947, they added this very Art Deco uh, facade on the front of the building and completely covered up that original front. Um, when it grew down, moved in and started their uh, renovations of the building, it exposed a tremendous amount of the original building, which I was very excited about. I got to work with them a lot on, you know, you know, this is cool, don't get rid of that kind of stuff, <laughs> um, which was almost everything. So, but, you know, when they took it up, they took off all this, like, uh, horrible linoleum and stuff off the floors. All the original wood floors were still there. I mean, was, when you go in there, there's wood floors that are in the front part, all original. Um, original beams that were exposed, and then when they took up that front stuff on the inside, um, you can actually see when you go in and you look at the front, you can actually see the original front facade on the inside frame uh, of the building. And of course, you know, it almost is it, it almost identical to that, except it's you know a couple changes here and there. They did keep all the lettering that was still left on the building um, that they're still. Uh, for purpose in some form or fashion. The giant superior beverage sign on top um, is inside the building. So the Bell Company, um, which was located on Bridge Street, this is the corner, this is Gage Street right here, this is Bridge Street. Um, this uh, photograph taken not long after this 1910 marking, as you can see very clearly on the top of the building. Um, this building is very recognizable um, if you're from, from Phoenixville, um, because that's what it looks like today. still has the original <coughs> top that says 19 Talent, and is now uh, occupied by the Majolica restaurant. Um, on the right side here, as you can see from the original, this early photograph, you can see this uh, great balcony that was on the top. That was covered up for a long time. Um, I remember when they, they had exposed it, I was uh, excited uh, because it shows more of the original building. That building, believe it or not, is one of the oldest buildings on Bridge Street. Um, it was built around 1837. Um, so it is much older than some of the buildings that, like, um, that people normally think were the earlier ones. That is one of the oldest uh, buildings on Bridge Street. <clears throat> this is actually. Uh, going back to the uh, post office uh, section, this is on the Church Street side. These two houses were houses that were torn down when they built the post office. Um, beautiful pre-Civil War buildings, especially this one. Um, and uh, it's a shame that those were lost. Um, and believe it or not, they weren't torn down a terribly long time ago, but there's not a ton of photographs of those houses. That is when they were doing the construction on the post office building. Um, this is not long after they tore those houses down. Here is Church Street here. Here's one similar to, almost close to the original facade of the Pax building, which was, of course, built to be a public school. Um, and was one of the first public schools in Phoenixville, and that is the uh, elementary level school that Samuel Payne Packer attended. That, of course, is the Baptist Church, which looks exactly the same. Here's Church Street now. Um, of course, all these houses were all in here. Church Street, you know, one of the earliest streets in Phoenixville. So if you look at some of those open, the open areas, little lots, 
you know, very good chance that there was one, some sort of house stuck in there. Um, going back to Bridge Street. Okay, so people know what building that is. Yeah, so the golf is a building uh, for the iron company and bridge company. Um, and once located right next to it was an Octagon schoolhouse. Uh, the first public school in Phoenixville, paid for by the iron company and Reeves himself. Um, that's a, uh, an incredible building that is long gone. Um, of course, that's kind of what it looks like now. Um, so it was located right in that little spot. Um, another rare image of, of buildings that you rarely ever see photographs of in Phoenixville. So if you're coming up Main Street and you're coming into the, uh, into the north side and you go underneath the trestle, that is Andre Thornton Park. Um, these two pre-Civil War uh, buildings were built um, around the 1820s um, into the 1830s. There were, at different time periods, stores in both of those, including the one at the barbershop on the corner was built to be a store, a dry goods store. Um, as you see, the, the landscape is almost exactly the same for the most part, um, except these houses were there at one point and they were torn down. All the way up here in the corner is the Pennsylvania house. Now this is a building that, that kind of changed a couple times, even before it was torn down. Um, this is an earlier image of when this building, of the original location of the synagogue in Phoenix. Um, as you can see, the star date is here in the window. Okay, there's not much to mark it um, uh, to tell. But um, that was what that was. Of course, later on, it became the first YMCA building, uh, located, of course, on Main Street. And, and that was the Rialto? Yes. yes. So here's the building again. Now, this is an operations photograph that was taken in 1949. Um, here's the Rialto Theater. Um, here is Phoenix Federal building. Um, that would want to occupy the corner. Um, and as you can see, the Rialto is already like kind of looks like they ended. This is only 1949. Um, and uh, the was pretty short sure lived. It's a cool looking theater. It was up to date. It was, um, as from what I've always told us, Brady went to see your cowboy and Indian theater. So, um, so in other words, B movies played there and the colonial had all the features. Rialto, uh, because there was the theater or sloped away, that's where we built the first swimming pool indoor in Phoenixville for the Lions. Oh, yeah. Yes. And of course, that's what it looks like now. Uh, empty lot and a small uh, Quite a difference. <clears throat> now, going up the other side of Bridge Street, um, Bridge and Gay. Um, you can see that um, this building, of course, has, this is one of the buildings that really has not changed that much architectural-wise. Um, and this building here on the corner, at one time, was always a storefront of some sort. It became a bar, it was the Gay Street Bar um, for a long time, and then it was a bar until it was torn down. Um, this is a, another candid photo from a snapshot that, uh, a group of snapshots that they acquired. Um, I really like this shot a lot. Um, dates to, to about 1920, 1922 uh, era. Um, here's a little bit later photograph of it was the Gay Street Restaurant. Um, pretty neat looking building. No. And believe it or not, is it, you probably remember that building, it was right here. Um, it was right next to Becky. A lot of people, sometimes people will confuse it and think it was Becky's building, but it was not. That building is long gone and it was located right here. Wasn't it called the Bridge? Yeah. It, it changed a down. bunch of names in the 60s and 70s, yeah. Um, so it's a 
Okay, now this is not a photograph, obviously, but this is a very cool drawing that um, is the only drawing or any sort of image of, of these buildings that once stood on Bridge Street. Um, somebody had written that it was period 1865 when this, when this etching was originally done. Um, over here on this side would be the Washington Hotel, of course now P.J. Ryan's. And these two small structures built in 1825 were actually located on the left side of the Washington Hotel before the buildings that are there now that were built a little, that were built in the uh, late 1870s. Um, so these were actually torn down in the 1870s and the buildings that are there now were built. Uh, British Street landscape at one point looked much different. Um, in the 1830s, it was more, you know, of course, smaller structures that were all located along Bridge Street. You know, the Mansion House and the Phoenix Hotel would have been two that would have been the biggest um, on Bridge Street at the time. And a lot of stuff, of course, was there. It was, you know, 1850, 1860s, very, uh, very large amount of bridge and Main Street were built up. Um, and of course, this is a little bit later Korean stuff. So, Washington Hotel. And these two buildings were right here before the, um, these two buildings, that, which you know, obviously were early buildings in, in themselves. Um, but I just show you how much Bridge Street changed even at that early in time period. A very early image of the Washington Hotel, Hotel Washington at that time it was known as. Uh, this is a, a part of a, uh, initially a small collection that we had acquired <coughs> years ago um, from a private collection. Um, this is scanned from a glass plate negative. Um, and they, this, this doesn't even do it justice. Um, scanned at a high resolution, um, 4800 DPI or something like that, um, the photo is crystal clear. Um, you can zoom in and you can see inside the windows of the building. Um, awesome news, this historical site first I released. This was a long time ago. It was, I believe, in the early 90s. Um, Dave Freeze had bought them um, and donated them to the historical society. Now, the collection has been still intact and out there for, for a long time. Just recently, I'm, I'm talking like, what, a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, he, he contacted the historical society and says, all right, I'm going to sell the rest of the uh, collection. Most of the photographs were actually taken by Nyman, or not Nyman, um, Kiner, who had a sporting good store in Phoenixville, was also an amateur photographer, and a very good one, I don't say. Um, his store is located right across the street um, from the Hotel Washington. Most of the photographs are glass plate negatives, and they're also paper negatives and paper photographs. Um, we are going to be acquiring the collection and there are 3,600 photographs. So, yeah, I think we can do another one of these talks, maybe about 10 more times, because these photographs, if it shows any clue of what we already have seen, they're going to be crazy. Um, this is just one of them, and there's a couple more that I'll show that's going to be in this presentation. Of course, that is the Hotel Washington now, you know, once occupied by the famous Lincoln. <laughs> so, so uh, Mr. Kiner took his camera and moved it this way and took this photograph, the earliest known photograph of the Colonial Theater, um, taken somewhere between around 1905 to 1907. Um, that's the date range most of these, these photographs are going to be. Um, as you can see, this is the original facade. This is when it was strictly an opera house. You can see the sign, Opera House Restaurant. Um, there was a restaurant down here. There was a grocery store in here, and there was a barber shop in here. If you, it's kind of hard to see if you're sitting in the back. But in the window here, there's a barber cutting a guy's hair. Um, another example, even from this, these negatives are incredible. Um, and this building here is one of my favorites that we'll be talking about here soon. So, kind of just moving down the street a little bit, Colonial Theater, the original first bank building, the first national bank of Phoenixville, 
and another house slash storefront, most likely at like some sort of tailor shop at the time that this photograph is taken. This is still here. Um, it's a great shot. The bank was built in 1860, or 1855, I'm sorry. Um, so it's a very early bank building. It, it kind of reminds you a little bit of the architecture, except for like a quarter of the size of the uh, National Bank in Montgomery County. It's located in Norristown, right on Main Street. That's a pre-Civil War bank building as well. There's not a lot of them around. Um, because later on, you know, these banks expanded. These buildings were pretty small. <clears throat> Moving down a little bit in the years, here's the Colonial Theater. Pretty much the same facade, except now they have a nice neon, uh, neon sign out the front here uh, saying Colonial Theaters and when they were starting to show movies. Bank building, the other building, and this is around the corner here of Bank Street. Uh, and this is what it looks like now. Though the bank itself tore down the old bank and the other house and built the gigantic bank in the 1920s. Um, and now this building here that we've seen in all those photographs, of course, is still there, probably built in the 1840s. Um, and uh, now, of course, this building is owned by the Colonial Theater and they've done a obviously incredible job um, making it into multiple theaters and concession stands and if anybody has not been in there yet, um, you should probably do it. 1960s again, World Town, the corner of Bridge and Main. Um, this is a, a familiar program for a lot of people. Secret, uh, grants. Um, this is at one point the team shop. This has changed this. Railroad ties and all kinds of railroad equipment. 
um, at the time. You know, very typical for an 1860s photo, you have to really look at the photograph because there's people all over the place in this photograph. There's people standing up here, over here, up here on top of the wall. Um, I'm actually surprised there's not somebody up on the roof. Um, so, uh, a great photograph. This photograph came in 1933. Um, now you can see what is now, what was exactly the same, what it looks like now, um, trestle. Um, and uh, really cool, really truck here in this photograph. There's the Columbia Station up on the top left there, and a bunch of kids playing in the water and trying to be in the photograph. So um, this is a, a nice 1930s image of the tunnel. Trestle, I'm sorry. Uh, and of course, this is what it looks like now. There's a lot of foliage, uh, foliage which is um, in the 1860s, the area around the Scooper River was pretty barren. Um, a lot of it had to do with pollution uh, from the factories that lined the Scooper River from Reading to Philadelphia. Um, there's a lot of stuff that couldn't grow near the river at that time. So when you look at photographs um, and, uh, from that time period, a lot of times you can see stuff very clearly that now is covered up. Um, so there's a big difference in, uh, in a view. This photograph was taken around 1915, 1920. Um, this is taken on Main Street, up on the uh, first, uh, second block of Main Street, past Prospect. Um, at this time, this is not long after George Freese moved his shoe store from the corner of Bridge and Main up Main Street is now located on a storefront here. Um, that is George Freeze right there standing in the front. Um, great image. Um, as you can see, the, the building is decorated. It's pretty wild. This photograph is probably dates to around one of the, probably pinpoint the date on it to be one of the homecoming celebrations that were very popular at the time. And every single storefront had patriotic decorations all over it. Is that in Brownstown now? Uh, no, it is actually this building here. So um, this is now mixed vintage on the right side here, and this right now is empty right now. Oh, we're going to take it. We're going to take it. Exactly. So this is the building. It's actually, it was kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, I was looking at the address. It was, it was, it was defined that way. But if you look at the buildings, you have to really pay attention to They're very, they're all built almost exactly the same time. So you have to really figure out the little, like, uh, nuances to the uh, structures of the buildings on the corners. Because um, most of these buildings were built around 1855, that whole block, um, from Church down to Prospect. Uh, on Church Street, um, not great past the historical society, uh, once was located at Christmas Seafood. Um, it's a, a great image um, that, once again, is gaining that collection of negatives that we had purchased. Um, it's, it's just a great storefront photo from the, from the uh, 19, about 1963. Yeah, so it looks like that. Um, you know, it hasn't really changed that much architectural wise, and this doesn't look as uh, sharp as it did. Can you trust company? One of the uh, many banks that has occupied Phoenix Hill throughout the years. Um, this building was actually not built, built by the bank, it was actually built to be a dry goods store um, around 1870. Um, it was occupied as that until the bank moved into this building and, and uh, not too long into like, the 1920s. This photograph was taken in 1949. Um, there was a whole batch of photographs that were taken in 1949 for the centennial. Um, and a lot of these, some of these images they wound up using for the newspaper editions and, and then some of the images were never used until we found them, until we got to say I don't know. Um, that was a mystery. Yeah. And as it looks like now, occupied by Charlotte Thomas Salon. This is where my wife and her still works. Um, but um, they did a very nice job. Um, the, the people who bought the building of, of restoring it um, to, of course, this original stone front, which is what it looked like when it was first built. Um, and the inside, um, they kept uh, all the original vaults, and, uh, and I'm sure a couple of them were not kept because they wanted to. Um, but uh, one of them, uh, of course, was a giant walk-in 
bulk, so it was probably going to stay in there. Um, and they utilized it uh, in a great way, so it's really cool looking in, in the uh, salon. So this is the uh, Main Street borough owned lot um, right here. Okay, there's 10 North Main Street. Um, at one point, there was a uh, Lee's Bar and Pizza that that stood in the back parking lot here. There's uh, Mill Street, Naylor's Row, and so it stood right in that back edge there. Um, another building that we don't have a ton of photographs of. Here's a little bit closer shot of the uh, building, and uh, they have a nice neon sign to let you know that there's air conditioning inside. At the time, there's the founding building, the East Street Bridge in the back. And of course, that's what the law looks like today, um, from these two different angles. So, um, a, uh, a, a building that almost looks exactly the same as it does now, just a little bit of changes to some facade, but at this time, parts, auto parts and accessories. They sold Goodyear, as you can see clearly on the front. There's a Cipco station on the sides, Shannon's hardware, lumber, um, when they had four, even more buildings on that section there. And this building here is also an automotive uh, supply. And um, it uh, is still exactly the same as it is now. Of course, this is gone. That's gone. Here's the front of the building. And that's what it looks like now. So for those who, who uh, have lived in Beansville for a long time, I know that not long after the 60s and get into the 70s, um, it's changed businesses a handful of times and made groceries in there. Um, and then there was a dollar store in there for a very long time. Um, so building, uh, I don't think there was ever an acting in there. Um, Jerry's was across the street. Jerry's was across the street. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the building was in pretty rough shape for a long time. It looked very nice. Um, if you rebought it and now it's, uh, a pretty great building, um, and uh, you can go inside and they did such a really great job of cleaning that building up. Eighty grams of beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Okay, uh, going back to Bridge Street again, working our way back up to the corner. Um, this is the corner of Bridge and Main, um, a building that I always often think I wish it was still there. Um, the Phoenix Hotel, it was built in 1849. Um, it was the first hotel hotel building that, that was built in Phoenix, where you had, uh, of course, some early ones on the outside of town, the Fountain Inn, in the early times, was, of course, always a tavern in um, the Mansion House, which was built in 1830, but was originally built to be a dry goods store. Uh, so, the Phoenix Hotel built to be a hotel in 1849, uh, obviously a pretty grand building. Um, here's the wall block here. There's these little buildings that were stuck in between, um, and then the Phoenix Hotel. Photograph taken um, around 1905. 1949, the Phoenix Hotel um, lost a lot of its uh, beautiful architecture already, um, and this was in plans of already uh, knocking it down. It then also catches fire. Um, and then they were forced to tear it down. Uh, so, as you can see, it has a big sign on it to let you know that the uh, Pantano House Wrecking Company uh, is the ones who did the work, and, uh, but they still were posting giant uh, clown posters here all the way up, advertising the circus um, in Phoenixville. And uh, so anyway, it's a great building here. Phoenix Hotel still on the side of, on the front sign there. Um, this was to be torn down very shortly after this photograph was taken. And of course, we all know what that lot looks like now. Um, Grants was there after that, um, and Grants was torn down. It's been empty by the parking lot uh, ever since. <clears throat> so, anybody know what the building that is? It looks almost, almost the same. Um, so at one point, this photo, I love this photograph, it's an Overland and Willys uh, motor cars sales and service uh, building, which is uh, pretty awesome. You don't see a lot of Willys and Overland stuff 
Um, and uh, so this photograph is great, a bunch of mechanics eating out in front. I'd like to have all these cars that are in the photograph. Bridge, your star. Bridge, the other direction, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Around the castle. Um, of course, it changed businesses multiple times throughout the year. Sure, our uh, paint store, print shop, uh, so it's a it's a neat building. Um, you know, has some of the same look to it. It looks very similar to the um, uh, Black Lab Bistro building, and um, but uh, one of the easier ways to tell is the side of this building here, uh, in one of the other images, the side of the building had no windows in. Um, in this photograph, you can see the windows. Um, so, now we're going to go back to the north side. Um, this is located, this was located on High Street. Um, this was the High Street School. You know, it existed into the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Um, the High Street School was built in the late 1800s and uh, was a public high school and uh, serviced many, many children on the north side, including my great-grandfather. Um, and of course, that building was torn down and um, this is what it looks like now. Now, of course, Joe Grand Park, um, the original steps from the school, and there's some, so there's some original fencing around the property from the original school. Um, this photograph was taken on the corner of High and Fairview Street, um, 500 High Street. Um, of course, this is one of my favorite photographs because this was my family's store. Um, this was, um, it had originally lived in this house here, which was built pre-Civil War, and then my family built this building um, to be a storefront and operated it as a storefront for a long, long time um, until the uh, store closed itself. The family still lived in the house um, into the late 90s, into the early 2000s, and it eventually sold out of the family. Um, and, uh, but that is one of the photographs um, of the original storefront and a, uh, they had deli meats and sandwiches, a little corner store, very typical. Um, I just thought it was deli, right? Was that deli? Mm -hmm. No, it went down for it. No, it down for it. And that's what it looks like now. Um, if you look, it's kind of hard to see in this image, but if you ever look at the front of it, you can clearly see the, co the coloration of the brick, uh, how the front was changed. Hot fair. Yeah. Um, this photograph was taken on the same exact spot facing the other direction. This was taken on High Street as well. Here's Fairview here. Okay. Um, this photograph was taken around 1922 to 1923. That's my great grandparents right there. Um, and this is the view now. Um, same house, this is built, same house is there. Um, very kind of a, a similar streetscape, not too far off from what it looked like at the time. <laughs> this is kind of a cool photograph because it's actually the building itself being constructed um, in the 1930s or early 1930s, uh, taken on the 400 block of, or 300 block of Bridge Street. Um, this is now that um, This little brick design, you can see in the original photograph, but the top, some of the top design was taken off. Um, multiple businesses have occupied. Um, back on the north side again, we have the original Polish Club building, built in 1922. Um, so if you're looking at the front of the Polish Club now, this building was on the right side of the line. Um, this building was built like, physically by the Polish immigrants. My great grandfather helped build that building and talked about how he would work with the iron company and then he would come home and dig the basement for the, Polish, the new Polish club. Um, and uh, so that was completed in 1922 and opened up. Um, they actually did have a Polish fraternal organization that was organized at Holy Trinity Church. You know, 15, about 15 years even before the Polish Club existed. Um, and of course, that's what it looks like today. And I would make a way back in time. Um, this is an etching from about the 1830s of what would be uh, 
labeled as Dr. Isaac Pennypacker in residence. Um, now, very true to etchings of the time period, um, it is not to scale, um, in the least bit. Uh, this is supposed to be the French Creek. Um, obviously, it was not the French Creek size, even at that time, it was wider at one point, but not that wide. Um, and uh, this neat little building down here probably was a little boathouse of some sort. Um, and then on top of the hill, this is Main Street. So you're going up Main Street, still the same bend, they got, they got that right. Um, you got the bend here, and the trestle will be right there. And um, so you're coming up. This was the original homestead of Isaac Pennypacker, um, and that's the house that Samuel Pennypacker was born in and lived um, until Isaac died, and he went and he lived in, in Montclair Mansion with his uncle Whitaker, Samuel Whitaker. Um, so he lived there as a boy for a long time, and a lot of his writings were memories of growing up on the north side with all the Irish immigrants that he had friends with. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a very seldom seen uh, image of the property. Um, over here, there was uh, one of the first drugstore apothecaries in Phoenixville was located on the north side, right near Isaac Pennypacker's house, right here off the of main. Um, and uh, they took time actually to write drugstore in that, in that image. Now, I talked about this earlier, we're going to go back to this photograph. Um, I zoomed in because um, there are very, very, very few actual photographs of the top of the hill showing some of the, of the houses that are gone. Now, you can see the Vander Slice mansions that are up here, but here is one of the buildings and houses from the Penny Packer uh, estate, and you see a couple outbuildings, and there's some stuff in here uh, before that was all torn down. Um, my grandma, who lived literally like cat corner from there, barely remembered the Penny Packer mansion. Um, and she was born in 1930. Um, so, um, a building that, one of those ones that we definitely wish was still there, um, but uh, long gone. There's <clears throat> pretty much the view now of what would have been that etching, a little bit up farther, but the creek is right here, and uh, here's the trestle. You can see the tops of the Vander Slice mansions, whatever here would have been, right where the giant, I mean, I'll just be blind, the ugly, big, uh, building that's there that now Chester County Housing Authority owns. Um, that is literally right exactly where the Penny Packer Mansion was and it faced this way um, and faced kind of like towards the railroad and towards the creek, so it's kind of all an angle a little bit, a giant porch. Um, was the Betsy Railroad there when those buildings were up and spices? No, but so those houses, some of those houses were built before the Pennsylvania Railroad, um, but of course, where the Pennsylvania Railroad was in full operation when those were occupied big time, especially in the late 1800s and the 1920s. My grandma got on a train on that Pennsylvania station right. for a passenger train right there. They didn't go to the Columbia station. Yeah. Um, so, and that was probably like back in the 1945, 50s. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do a couple photographs here at the end, and I kind of want people to actually play a game uh, and try and guess what's in there now. Some of these are very simple, and some of them might be a little bit difficult. But this photograph was taken in the early 60s, I think it's 1960 or 61. Um, and of course, some of these buildings look almost exactly the same. Um, of course, J.J. Newberry's uh, Five Beyond, so Heidi Sue, and then of course now it's Concha Hawk and Grill. Um, when you see this photograph, you can see how, you know, of course, uh, J.J. Newberry's had both sides, um, that, that when, when they operated, they actually did that. Because this building here um, is actually much older um, than, than, than this building. J.J. Newberry built that building. This building dates to about 1870 to 1875. So when Newberry actually get in there, around the 1920s, they opened up a hole in between the two structures, um, which was re-exposed when they redid the building. Hawk and grilling. Um, but originally, this building was here, this wasn't even here like for you know 50 years almost. Um, so, and of course, there's Buster's, Candy, and Luncheonette, and everybody, you know, I mean, Schwab's was still around even when I was young. Um, so, 
flow straw was there forever. Um, and uh, of course, you have artisans and all kinds of other stuff that, that are occupying, which artisans on exactly the same storefront. Um, now, here's a fun one. Can anybody tell me where that's at? Ladies, yeah? So that's a photograph taken inside. I, we, we have a lot of great images on the outside of the building. One of the favorite things about Aquarium's Negatives was actually the interior shots that were taken that you don't see that much of. Um, so this is Whitey's Hardware Store. Of course, it was in existence in the 1990s. I went in there when I was younger. Um, it was there for a very long time. Um, and it's a great image. Anybody tell me where that's at? Built as as, uh, as as tenant houses for Irish immigrants. 
Um, Pre-Civil War, um, when they came here, you have you know multiple families living in one structure. Um, so they're very historically important uh, to Keynesville. It's just a nice example of you know some of the structures that have been restored. That um, you know besides you know the food marine and different things, but the actual houses themselves um, and uh, and a lot of them on the north side. Um, so. Definitely a positive, and uh, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, if not, I am wrapping it up. I mean, if you don't want to ask now, you can only ask them So it's called Station Or is actually one of the latest we know. And there's a couple more besides the Columbia. We were out at the hotel Chesterton. There was actually a pre civil war hotel on that property at one point. I'll just make a quick Right, good. You said the post was for the service. When they had the service in Phoenix, so where would they do it? Do you know? Oh, I know they had it up in, um, I think at one point it was in Washington Field, and I believe that at one point there was actually a, um, a horse track in, in Phoenixville. And um, they had things, multiple like large events like that on this horse track. Um, and uh, there actually was a giant track, believe it or not, this is like probably way before that service, but there was a track on the Phoenix Iron Company property that was pre Civil War uh, that uh, existed for a period of time. Any other questions? The first YMCA, if I remember correctly, was above Jaworski's. That's yes. where I went. Yeah, Bridge Street. Bridge Street. Yeah. That was, so you had the, uh, the first YMCA, uh, was it built in? It was a storefront on yeah. the street, which in the proximity of Jerusalem, and then we moved up to the synagogue, uh, and then we got control of the Rialto Theater. And you built a new one. And then we built a new one. Do you have a question? Mm -hmm.
specifically related to historical uh, importance to the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, and uh, so then that's how they would get approved. And it actually is really hard to get one um, because they get a lot of applicants every year and they only approve so many. And they have a, a board of about 10 different people from all over the state. So somebody from like Pittsburgh or somebody from Erie has to be like, oh yeah, the Phoenix Iron Company, and, and, and you have to prove to them that it's important to the state. Um, so, you know, the Union Club is definitely significant enough, not just locally. Right. Um, another one that I have been far pursuing is actually one for single penny packs. Um, the easy part about that is if you apply for a marker for a former state governor, it's automatically approved. Okay. So, um, yeah, but you know, the iron company was you know one that you think you know brainer and you got approved, um, and the army hospital. Um, so that's that's the two you know Phoenix full uh, that we have. Any other questions? Is there any uh, like oral histories about um, I guess from the Phoenixville townspeople or any of the iron workers or, or anything like that at the historical society? Um, you mean like um. Get it written down. Like ancestry related stuff? Yeah, like 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 oral histories, like Oh, oral history, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we right now are working on a uh, oral history uh, project that uh, we acquired um, some high-end uh, camera and audio equipment and we have been recording um, oral histories um, from you know we're trying to get you know some of the, the real, the, like for instance, Don Hoppage, for if you know from Kingsville, uh, Dave Freeze, um, you know, people that uh, remember a lot of things. Um, and then uh, we obviously are going to work on, you know, former steel workers. Um, there's one copy of a, that was actually done on VHS back in the 90s that we had transferred to DVD um, that was done um, before they, uh, before they restored the foundry building, um, if you're from Phoenixville, you probably remember Alex Kobach. Um, Alex was very much into history and loved Phoenix Steel history. Um, he went and worked with a couple other people and went around and like, actually videotaped the insides of the building, some of the buildings that were torn down. But also, they interviewed um, the iron and steel workers because they had, at that time, this in the 90s, there was some like actual iron workers uh, still living. Um, and uh, nowadays, of course, there's not many um, that actually work there that would actually work on the iron company. Um, the, the iron company is iron and steel, and it's steel not long after that. So, but yeah, we have some of that stuff, and I think some other things uh, like that uh, in the society. Any other questions? Okay. okay. Well,